Welcome to this uh, in Germany evening lecture. Uh, depending on the place where you are on the planet at the moment, it might be a morning, afternoon or late night lecture for you. Uh, I'm Rainer Malaka, I'm a professor of computer science and it's an honor for me to host you on this session of a wonderful mathematician. Mariam Mirzakhani was an Iranian mathematician and professor of mathematics in Stanford University. And she was honored 2014 with the Fields Medal for her work on the dynamics and geometry of Riemann surfaces and their moduli spaces. She was the first and to date the only woman and the first Iranian to be honored with the award. Unfortunately, she died in July 2017 at the age of only 40. HLF honors her with uh, two events on uh, this forum. The first one is a panel you are joining right now and which we will start in a minute. The second one is we also show a film called Secrets of the Surface on her life uh, and we show it in the satellite program. So check for that uh, in your HLF program. And there are actually four time slots where the film is broadcasted. So don't miss it and find the slot that is most convenient for you. In the following, we start with a session uh, with a panel uh, on Mirza Khani's work and uh, with multiple researchers, also young researchers, telling how she influenced and inspired them. And I think uh, Maria Mizalkani was really a role model. And also, if we talk about transgressing separation, uh, she also was an interesting person because born in Iran and then working in the USA is also something on transgression uh, separation. Uh, without further ado, I want to lead you into the uh, panel, which is pre-recorded, but we have a live discussion afterwards where we have some of the panelists here live for question answering. So don't forget to post your questions into the chat and then we can have a live discussion afterwards with you. So Welcome everybody. So this is a panel on uh, uh, theorems and initiatives inspired by Maria Mirzakani. So it's a panel discussion that I'm going to, to present for you. And uh, I'm uh, Marie-Françoise Roy. I'm the chair of the International Mathematical Union Committee for Women in Mathematics. If you are interested in our committee, then you can see, uh, you can follow the, this link to see our activities. So, uh, in fact, uh, we, we are going to have uh, several activities related to Maria Mirzakani during this uh, virtual uh, uh, HLF uh, forum. We have several things. First, we have the panel itself that we are having now. Then there is a virtual exhibition called Remember Maria Mirzakani, which was created for the World Meeting for Women in Mathematics at the International Congress of Mathematicians in Rio in 2018. It has been shown in more than 20 locations in Brazil, Canada, France, Italy, Iran, Spain, Sweden, Turkey, and USA. And you'll see it as part of the uh, VHLF program. And also the film, Secrets of the Surface, the mathematical vision of Maria Mirzakani. It's a one hour documentary film, which is produced by Zala Film together with the Mathematical Science Research Institute. It was filmed in Canada, Iran, and the United States, released in January 2020. And you are going also to see it as part of this, uh, as part of this uh, program. So I'm very grateful to this uh, VHLF to be having all these activities for, related to, to Maria Mirzakani. So, well, Maria Mirzakani is an inspiration for many reasons, and the panel is aiming at analyzing a few of them. So we have five panelists. Vincent Delacroix from France is going to present one of the theorems he proved recently with his collaborators. 
using Maria Mirzakhanis Ailis. Then Hélène Barcelo from USA is going to present with her the Mathematical Science Research Institute initiatives, especially to create a special chair named after Mariam, but she's also going to present other initiatives. And Andrea Vera Gallardo from Chile, she's going to describe the METWEL initiative, which is celebrating women in mathematics every year on Mariam Mirzakhanis' birthday. And finally, we included in the panel two young researchers, Sorel Tukamchukmege from Cameroon and George Philippe Gadori Sanfasson from Canada, and they are going to give us some testimonies of her influence on their lives. So that's uh, the panel we are proposing to you. And uh, I just uh, would like to invite uh, Vincent de Lecroix to make his uh, presentation. So please, uh, Vincent. Thank you very much, Marie-Françoise. So it's a great honor for me to present this work and especially great honor that it's inspired a lot by the work of Mirzakani. And I will describe the links between what I will be presenting and what she did in her PhD thesis. So the title of my talk is Meanders and Curves on the Sphere. Uh, next. So let me first define what are the objects I'm interested in. These are meanders, and a meander uh, is a picture or a figure in the plane that you obtain by drawing a simple closed curve, so no self-intersection. And you record the intersection of these curves with the horizontal axis. And you consider two meanders to be equivalent if the order of the crossings are the same. So for a fixed number of crossings, you have finitely many such objects, and one of the purpose of my work is to be counting these objects. Uh, so on the screen, you can see one example of a meander. It's a meander with 12 crossings, and just below the, the screen, you can see the encoding given by the sequence of crossing of the blue curves with respect to the horizontal axis where you see the numbers. So, if you want to start counting, you, we will fix the number of crossings and see how many meanders there are. So the first number is two. The number of crossings is always even. And there is a single meander with two crossings, which is just a circle. Let's go to meanders with four crossings. So there are two meanders with four crossings. Next. With six crossings, you can see on the screen that there are eight of them. And Let's go on. Next, with eight crossings, uh, there are 42 of them. And this goes on and goes on. And one purpose of uh, enumerative combinatorics is to understand the asymptotic behavior of the sequence. So how fast does it grow? So I will be denoting MN, the number of meanders with two N crossings. As we saw before, M1 is equal to one, M2 is equal to two, M3 is equal to 8, and M4 is equal to 42. And you can compute more and more of these numbers, and it continues with 262, and etc. And here are a few of them. So let me mention here that we do not know a lot about these numbers MN. As far as the asymptotic behavior of MN is concerned, there are some very precise conjectures done by French physicists in the years 2000, Di Francesco, Golinelli, and Guiter. And there ha one computer program has been designed to compute these numbers. And I think we know them up to n equal 42. And in order to count them, there, are, there is some subtle algorithm designed by uh, Iwan Jensen to do that. What I will be presenting is not this count of meanders MN, but a refinement where we also take into account minimal arches. So a minimal arch is uh, an arch of this meander between two consecutive crossing. So on the screen, you can see two examples. On the left-hand side, there is a meander with 12 crossings and there are eight minimal arches. So I filled the, <coughs> the faces corresponding to these minimal uh, arches on, on the example. And on the right-hand side, there is also a meander with 12 crossings, but this time there are five minimal arches. And be careful here, I consider a minimal arch 
something which go from the first to the last crossing because you should imagine that this horizontal line is actually on the sphere and the first and the last are actually consecutive crossings. So now that I define the number of uh, the number of crossings and the number of minimal arches, I can get new numbers m and k, which are refinements of the numbers m n I defined before, which are the number of meanders with two n crossings and k minimal arches. So let's go to examples. So if I take again the list I had before, I will just sort them by number of minimal arches. So m2 was equal to 2. And you can see that on the picture, both of them have four crossings. So M24 is equal to two. So with six crossings, we had M3 is equal to eight. And you can check that uh, six of them have four crossings and six of them, uh, two of them, sorry, have six crossings. And for M4, which was equal to 42, you have respectively eight, 16, 16, and two, number of meanders with four, five, six, and eight uh, no, minimal arches. Next. So these number M and K, they form an array of numbers, uh, which is indexed by N, the number of crossing, and K, the number of minimal arches. On the screen, you can see the array for the values of N going from one to seven, and for K going from four to 14. Uh, next. So what is the main result we obtained together with Elise Goujard, Peter Zograf, and Anton Zorich recently is the behavior of this sequence M and K. So there is an average to be done. So we, we need to sum all the number of meanders with less than a certain number of crossings. So this is why there is a sum of the M and K for N smaller than L. But this average version uh, is asymptotic to a certain constant that is denoted by f of k times l to the power 2k minus 6. So this grows polynomially and there is an explicit constant and this constant has an explicit formula, not so nice, but there is a formula, uh, which is displayed here. So it's a mixture of a power of pi and uh, binomial coefficients and factorials. So this is all, even though there are many of them. So what I would like to do now is to explain the link of this result with the work of Maya Mirzakan. So the next theorem is actually looking, the result is actually very, looking very closely to this result. And this is the theorem she did about counting curves in uh, surfaces, so in hyperbolic surfaces. So to make the parallel between the two results, uh, we will be working with a hyperbolic sphere with k cusps. So which means that we consider a sphere which k punctures and a metric of constant curvature on it. Because we have this constant curvature, this, this metric, it allows to measure length of the curves. And we consider two numbers, the number CXL, of multi-curves of length at most L on X, and the number F, S of XL, the number of simple closed curves of length L on X. And what Mayam Mirzakani did, and to prove some asymptotic behavior of these numbers, C, CXL and SXL, as L goes to infinity. And more precisely, you have polynomial behavior. So they both grow to as L to the power 2K minus six, and there are some explicit constant in front of both quantities. And as you can notice, the numbers that appear are also appear in the constants in our theorem. And so this is part of our work to make this uh, link between the two counting results. Counting curves and counting meanders are actually very similar. And to make this link, what you have to do is to actually see a meander as a pair of curves, as a pair of two simple closed curves. So I said that you consider the intersection of a curve with the horizontal axis, but this horizontal axis is actually playing the role of a simple closed curve itself. So basically what are meanders? 
they are configuration of two simple closed curves on a surface. And the minimal arches I was talking about is very much related to the cusps, this number k that you hear. So you can actually use Miyazakani theorem to prove our results. And this was something that was done by Francisco Arana Herrera. But we provide a proof uh, which is direct and does not go through, through this theorem. So basically the two statements are equivalent. So this is all, thank you very much. So thanks a lot, uh, Vincent. Uh, I think it was really uh, a great, uh, a great uh, uh, presentation of uh, how uh, Maria Mirzakani uh, uh, results can uh, inspire mathematicians. And it was also very well chosen because, uh, as you know, the uh, audience of this uh, uh, virtual uh, HLF is uh, pluridisciplinary, so it's not only for mathematicians. So. Many thanks for doing the effort to, to explain uh, for a general audience. So. Okay, so thank you, Vincent. And now we, we switch uh, to the presentation of uh, Hélène uh, from MSRI, and uh, she's going to part on the second uh, part of her topic, which is also the initiatives inspired by Maria Mirzakani. So, Hélène, I'm inviting you to, to talk. Thank you, Marie-France. Uh, I'm very happy and honored to know this panel. As uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, Mariam has been an um, inspiration and continues to be to so many people, and um, in particular to me and to MSRI, as we had a deep connection that we developed over the years. So let me mention a little bit her, um, her um, association with MSRI. Um, she was, for example, in 2007, she was one of the organizers of the um, Techmuller Theory and Kleinian Groups um, program. That's a one semester program. And she was, um, if not the youngest, one of the very young uh, organizers. Usually, organizers are a little bit more um, uh, advanced in age, if I can say when they become organizer of a program, but uh, she was extraordinary in setting up that program. She came back another uh, few years later as a research professor in the dynamics on moduli space and geometric structure um, program. And actually she had come even earlier than that in 2005. I think it's her first at least recorded uh, attendance. And at that time she was accompanying her husband, uh, Jan Van Drak, was a member of the probability algorithm in statistical physics. And so we had her uh, in many of our program. Uh, next, uh, we also had her, of course, as a speaker to many uh, workshop. And um, for example, I also know she told me that one of the reasons that she made the decision to move to Stanford from uh, Princeton was that um, MSRI was at proximity and she was going to be able to attend um, several of the uh, scientific activities there. Um, her uh, connection with us also um, runs uh, deeper. She was a member of our uh, scientific advisory committee. These are four years term, all rotating. It's 10 um, exemplary and, and very distinguished mathematicians that actually are more than advisory. They decide on the scientific direction of the Institute. And Marianne served on that committee for four years. And um, she was, a, it's, it's uh, fair to say that she was an inspiration to all of us on the committee. There's a few of the years that she was on the committee, she was going through very harsh treatment, trying to uh, combat the cancer. And for example, I remember one meeting I had, she told me that uh, she would have to step away for a while, for a few hours, because she had to go for treatment. And I told her that it would be very understandable if she would just miss that meeting. And uh, no, she decided usually those meetings are two days. So she was there on the Friday morning. She went away on the Friday afternoon and she came back on the Saturday morning. We were all uh, deeply, uh, impressed and thankful for her generous contribution. And uh, in the spring of 2017, MSRI director David Eisenberg 
uh, approach her to ask her if she would uh, join the board of trustees. And in a very emotional uh, meeting, actually, uh, she agreed, but she warned us that she may not live to become a trustee. And unfortunately, she indeed, um, this does not happen. Um, next, so um, we decided to uh, honor Mariam and for that to uh, create a Mirzakani and uh, endowed research professorship. This is a 5 million um, endowment. We are very much on our way. We are very happy to be, um, to be not so far from uh, concluding it. And this will be to um, invite distinguished research professor in the various uh, program that we have. We have two other um, research uh, professorship endowed and one is by the children of Xing Shen Chen, the um, founder of the uh, MSRI Institute and a renowned mathematician as well. And the other one in the name of uh, David Eisenberg. And so she, she definitely will bring a lot of um, uh, prestige and um, will definitely um, help us to reach out to distinguished professor to visit MSRI. We also um, partner with uh, George Chichiri, the cineast who made the movie uh, Secrets uh, of the Surface, the mathematical vision of Mariam Mirzakani that uh, will be uh, um, shown later uh, during this, um, this whole uh, program. And um, it was a pleasure to work with him. We've worked on many movies with George and uh, I think he captured quite well the spirit of Mariam. Um, it was a pleasure to introduce him to the various mathematicians throughout the world, to connect him with the Iranian and uh, the various people uh, that you saw. It was also an opportunity for me to see how generous the mathematical community was. They, they all agreed to speak uh, with George and to spend time with him and to try to um, describe Mariam's contribution, both mathematically and um, also um, personally. It's a very touching movie. If you haven't seen it, I think you will enjoy it uh, quite a bit. There is, we are not the only one having uh, had the idea of, of doing something uh, in her honor. Of course, Stanford um, University, where she was a faculty, uh, has established a graduate student and postdoctoral fellowship. The Ameri American Mathematical Society now has a Mirzakani lecture um, that's being held every year at the Joint Mathematics Meeting, the big uh, annual uh, meeting of the society. Um, the first one was given this January, well, past January 2020 by Tatiana To. The American Mathematical Society also has a Mariam Mirzakani fund for the next generation, and this is to help um, graduate student uh, attend a conference. The Breakthrough Prize also have a, um, a prize in Mirzakani's name. Um, the Persian Mariam uh, Mirzakani Scholarship for Women has also been uh, established uh, and the um, Mathematical Association of America has also uh, sorry, a prize uh, in an honor. So those are the ones that I could glance. I'm not uh, an expert. There probably are many others. There are a few uh, also building and uh, object, quote unquote, uh, name in her honor. For example, in 2017, the Farzanegan High School that you will see in the movie. This is the high school where Marianne um, did her high school. They named the amphitheater, their amphitheater and library after her. The Sharif University, where she was an undergraduate and a member of the uh, Olympiad uh, team, also um, named their main library in the College of Mathematics after her. There is a house of mathematics in uh, Isfahan. You will see that also in the movie. And in collaboration with the mayor, they named the conference hall in the city after her. Uh, also in 2014, uh, the year she received the Fields Medal, um, the student at the University of Oxford founded the Mirzakani Society, a society for women and uh, non-binary students studying mathematics at the University of Oxford. 
she visited them actually um, at some point. Then in 2016, she also uh, was made a member of the US National Academy of Science. And um, one that I like very much is that uh, February 2nd, 2018, Satellogic is a high resolution Earth observation imaging and analytics company. And they launched a new uh, micro satellite named in, uh, in honor of Mariam Amirzakani. So maybe if you look at night up in the sky, <laughs> you can see uh, the satellite in our name. And uh, in February uh, 2020, of course, then the uh, International Day of Women and Girls in STEM, uh, Mirma, Mirza Kani was honored uh, by the UN women as one of the seven female scientists who have shaped our world. So I think she leaves uh, a deep um, mark uh, in the mathematical community and in the community in general. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Helen. It was really a very nice uh, presentation, uh, not only of, um, of MSRI initiatives, but a lot of other initiatives. And as, as you just said, uh, there are much more. I can mention one in my university in Rennes. We have uh, now an amphitheater named after Maria Mirzakani, but I'm sure that there will be much more all over the the world that we don't even know about. So, okay, so many thanks for accepting the, the invitation and good luck also to MSRI for uh, completing the, the funding. And, um, okay, so then I'm going to, to ask uh, Andrea to, to talk now. Um, Andrea is going to talk about the May 12 initiatives, which was uh, decided uh, because uh, May 12 is the birth date of. Uh, of Maria Mirzakani, so it's another initiative uh, inspired by, by Maria Mirzakani. Thanks, Marie Francois, for the invitation. Hi, all, good evening. I'm so glad to be here and tell all of you about this nice collaborative experience and work that we have carried out as the May 12th coordination group. As Marie Francois said, my name is Andrea Vera. I am from Chile and currently working at Math Institute of Universidad de Valparaíso. You can see here a nice picture of Valparaíso. I am part of the coordination group of May 12 initiative and also part of Colectivo de Mujeres Matemáticas in Chile, which in English would be something like Chilean Collective of Women Mathematicians. I am also involved in a research group on gender and math issues, which is called Anillo Matemáticas y Género. Next. So I want to tell you today about May 12 initiative. What is this about? What has happened in these two years? But first, how was this initiative born? Next. The idea of celebrating women in mathematics on Mariam Mirzakani's birthday, May 12, was proposed by the Women's Committee of the Iranian Mathematical Society at the World Meeting for Women in Mathematics in 2018. This meeting was a satellite event of ICM of the same year, held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. There was a vote by rising hands and therefore the initiative was approved by hundreds of attendees at the meeting. In fact, the picture we saw in the previous slide, this one, is from the moment of that vote. Thus, the coordination group of the May 12 initiative was constituted by representatives from the European Women in Mathematics, the AWM, the African Women in Mathematics Association, Indian Women and Mathematics, Colectivo de Mujeres Matemáticas de Chile, and the Women's Committee of the Iranian Mathematical Society. I think it is very important to remark that this is the first and unique initiative linking regional organizations for women in mathematics worldwide. So here we can see photos of each of the members of the coordination group and also a picture of some of the Skype meeting we had. Nikita is from India, Carolina is from Brazil, Petra from the US, Mokjan from Iran, Marie-Francois Oadrogo from Burkina Faso, 
Olga from France, Marie-Francois Roy from France, Elisabetta from Italy, and myself from Chile. So the first step was to create a website for the initiative, where all the events could be listed. We then began to spread the word among our colleagues to invite them to organize activities for May 12, 2019. And this was the result. We had 119 events in total, eight in Africa, 13 in Asia, 29 in Europe, 29 in Latin America, 14 in North America, and 16 in Oceania. There was a lot of diversity in terms of the type of events. For example, we had panel discussions, math talks, a screening of the short film Journeys of Women in Mathematics, the Remember Mariam Mirzakani exhibition, gender and science talks, math workshops, a math carnival, among others. It was a very good experience and we feel very proud of such a successful initiative. We will see several pictures here of some events around the world. So this is the beautiful poster of the celebration of May 12th in Iran. This picture is from that same celebration. Then we have Remembering Mariam Mirzakani exhibition at Nesin village in Turkey. This is from the celebration meeting in Ukraine. Here we can see Sarah Koch's lecture during the celebration at, at MSRI. This is from May 12th celebration in Ethiopia. And finally, a picture from the meeting we had in Valparaiso, Chile. After this, we were invited by the journal notices of the AMS to write an article about May 12th, and it was published last December. You are all welcome to read it and can get it from the AMS website. So 2020 has arrived and we did the pandemic that we are currently facing. So apparently the events of May 12th were not going to happen. But fortunately, the idea of inviting individuals to one free screening of the film Secrets of the Surface at home came up thanks to a prior agreement between the May 12th Initiative Group and Sala Films. Applicants then received a link to screen the film and they were asked not to disseminate it. When the process started, there were versions of the film only in English and Farsi. Shortly after, the version with French subtitles was added. Then the May 12th network also provided subtitles in Italian, Portuguese, Spanish and Turkish. And the corresponding versions were produced by Sal Films. Next. The success was overwhelming more than 20,000 requests were received. The proportion of versions requests was as follows. English without subtitles, 37. With subtitles in Farsi, 34. Requested from people not always located in Iran. In Spanish subtitles, 11%. In French, 8%. In Italian, 4%. And in Turkish, 3%. So finally, we had the film on seven different languages. Next, on the other hand, people from 131 countries participated with the following distribution by geographic zones. Asia, 39%. Europe, 27%. North America, 20%. Africa, 2%. Oceania 1% and 2% with no country indicated. We are so happy that despite the difficult moment we are facing, the math community was still able to commemorate Women's in Mathematics Days. And we are looking forward to having some face-to-face -face events on May 12, 2021. Fingers crossed. 
And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Many thanks, Andrea. It was really a beautiful presentation. And I'm so proud to be also part of this uh, initiative group with you and all these uh, wonderful other women. And we were indeed extremely lucky that while uh, we had this COVID crisis, we were able to nevertheless launch this very uh, wonderful initiative. And this is also thanks to MSRI and to the fact that they had uh, done the, this film. So you see that uh, several of our uh, presentations are in fact uh, related. So many thanks. And now we wish, it's, uh, I think it's a little bit the tradition also of uh, this uh, Heidelberg Laureate Forum to associate young researchers. So we invited two young researchers that are not going to move to Heidelberg this year because of course of this uh, pandemic, but nevertheless, they are able to be with us and uh, presenting uh, how uh, Maria Mirzakani has been uh, inspiring also their own lives. So uh, I'm asking uh, Sorel to talk. Uh, she will uh, say a few words about uh, who she is, and uh, then she will uh, tell us how Maria has been inspiring her. So Sorel, I invite you to talk. Thank you very much, Marie Francoise, for the introduction. I'm very happy to be part of this panel. So I will be presenting, my, I'll be introducing myself. My name is Sorel Tukam. I am from Cameroon and actually I'm staying in Ghana because I completed my master's degree in mathematical science at the African Institute of Mathematical Science in Ghana. Usually we, the abbreviation is AIMS Ghana. So over here, uh, the next slide, I will be showing a picture of my mom and I in Egypt, because I also did my bachelor's degree in Egypt. Uh, we visited the Great Pyramid of Egypt, so I just wanted to share the picture with you. Uh, next. So beside this is a picture of a workshop that we did on May 12th, uh, because we wanted to share the history of Maria Mirzakani. So it was an initiative that, were, that uh, was, let's say, our lecturer in topology and not theory, her name is uh, Neshla. She wanted to share how Maria Mirzakani impacted her life because she's also from Iran as well. So she wanted to let us know and share actually what women are able to do when they go into the field of mathematics. So Neshla, she told us about uh, her, the history of Maria, how she, her education, also how she was raised up, and also how the breakthrough and innovations she did in the field of complex geometries, because Neshla, she's also a lecturer in topology and not theory, and it's also some kind of, let's say, success in complex geometries. So she want, she shared with us how she used Maria Mizakani's work in order for herself to, let's say, build a name or to create a name for herself in the field of mathematics. So currently, Neshla, she is working at the Max Planck Institute in Germany. So she, oh, and also she was also encouraging us, young female, to not be afraid if one, for example, to continue and to continue and do like higher education in mathematics, we should just like find our interest and just focus on it and go forward. Um, up next, I will talk about the keynotes that I, the keynote that I noted for National Talks. So one thing is Maria Mezakani, let's say she influenced, impacted all of us through her journey, her own journey, and also her own innovations and her own accomplishments. So when we see what she was capable of doing, we understand that us, we, we, we can, if she was able to do it, it means we can, and we can use her own experience, we can use her own uh, journey to also be the one, to also make a footprint in the field of, in the field of mathematics. So, and also, Knowing that Mariam, she was a leading figure in mathematics, as well we can be inspired and understand that as a leading figure, we can use her, we can, let's say, use the, or follow her experience, follow the advice she has been giving through, 
through the film that we watched, uh, the secret of the surface, and also understand by that that if you, if you want, nothing can stop you, not even your gender. And uh, up next, I will talk about another workshop that we had at AIDS Ghana. So this is a, a gender workshop. We were talking about issues in academia, gender-related issues in academia, because uh, currently in, I would say in Africa, the percentage of women that are in the field of mathematics is actually very low. And AIDS, AIDS as a network, not only AIDS Ghana, AIDS as a network has taken over to let, to increase the percentage of women in the field of mathematics. Here, at this, in this institution, they want at least 33% of their students to be female. So this is, and there are even, there are, there, there are discussions on the table to even, let's say, increase that percentage and even admit more. So it is very important for this institution aims to increase the number of women in the field of mathematics, the number of African women in general. So in this uh, workshop, the, uh, this gender workshop, we talked about first, uh, first thing, the percentage of women, second thing, the accomplishment of Mariam Lizakani, of course, and third thing, we try to encourage young females to, who are in high school to also venture and jump into the field of mathematics and not be as, and also to not be scared because there is nothing scary about mathematics. You just need to be focused. You just have to just, you just need to have some interest and uh, everything will, will be well. So this is the end of my talk. Mm, thank you. Many thanks, Sorel. It's really very wonderful to hear you. And of course, uh, we had not yet the opportunity to meet in person, but uh, with this uh, panel, I have the impression I, I know you already uh, a little better. So I wish you good luck also for the future. And I would like then to call, uh, to invite uh, George Philippe to, to give uh, the last presentation of the, of the panel. So he's currently in, uh, in Canada and he's going to, to talk to us. George Philippe, please. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, first, I just want to say that it's a tremendous honor to be here with all of you panelists, but also talking about uh, Mariam Mirzakani's work um, and influence on my life. Uh, I'm just very glad to have that opportunity and to, to be here today. Uh, my name is Georges-Philippe gadoury saint -Fasson. I'm currently in Sherbrooke uh, in Quebec in Canada. Uh, so uh, I am an undergraduate student at Bishop's University. I am pursuing a Bachelor of Science Honours in Mathematics, but also uh, an Honours in Applied Psychology. Uh, and I'm graduating either this year uh, or the next year. We'll see what my grad studies plans are. Um, and I think what, what interested me and what motivated me to learn more about Mariam Mirzakani's work um, and kind of character uh, is my interdisciplinary interest as well. Uh, I'm very interested not only in mathematics and problem solving, uh, but also to the approaches to mathematics and how people challenge uh, the status quo and also uh, the environment and the academia around mathematics. And that, that might stem from the psycho psychology uh, interest of mine. Uh, I'm also very interested in ethics and mathematics. Um, so gender issues in mathematics, uh, equity issues in mathematics as well. Again, how we approach mathematics. Um, and on another side, on the side note, interested in applied psychology, therapy, relationships, and I enjoyed learning. I enjoyed the way the, the movie, uh, the film what was done, uh, showing not only the great mathematician that she was, but also the great character that she was uh, in the world of mathematics and in the world of academia as well. Um, so that's, that's, that uh, is a nice segue to uh, the lessons that I've learned from learning more about Miriam Mirzakani. Um, what, I, uh, what I could say uh, is definitely that, um, well, before, you know, before being more in mathematics, I had not heard as much about uh, Mirzakani's work. Uh, but as soon as you get into problem solving courses, which is, which is what I fundamentally love about mathematics, um, I love learning about 
about topics and applying them, but more importantly, I love getting that toolbox and then just getting in the wild and, and applying it. Um, so I had I had some lessons prepared, but yesterday in one of my problem problem solving courses, we went over uh, the important steps to solve a problem. Uh, and and after watching the movie, for me, these really resonated. The first step, the zero step, so not even the the first step, is the psychological aspect, which which I really saw in in Mirza Kani's work. The first, the mental toughness, uh, the confidence, the concentration, and also the subconscious work. But for me, the the three first ones uh, were really really present and um, were kind of things that throughout my learning of of Mirza Kani's work. Um, kind of stayed with me because at the end of the day, problem solving is not necessarily about the answer. It's it's a lot about the approach. You might never found, find the answer, but it's about getting a bit further, getting that concentration and confidence. And I really saw that confidence uh, being shown and being being portrayed, uh, but also being transferred to students or to anyone she interacted with, really. Um, be it to, for the advancement of more women in mathematics or, or just the field of mathematics, mathematics in general, um, that she kind of inspired everyone she got in contact with. Um, so yeah, there's, I also enjoyed learning uh, kind of about how she approached uh, problem solving competitions, how she got the first perfect score in Toronto at the Olympiads, um, and that there's a memorial now at, uh, at the University of Toronto. Um, and questioning right now what I'm going to do after graduation, uh, after my undergraduate, so going on to graduate studies, um, I enjoyed reflecting, and, and I think these are, are what what resonated the most with me. Uh, the quotes from both the movie and, and some other sources that, uh, at first she said, I was more excited about reading novels, and I thought it, I would become a writer one day. Uh, and then, which, which also resonates with me, because I love writing and I love, I love reading. Uh, but also I found that passion for mathematics and, and she says I got excited about math just as a challenge but then I realized that it's really nice and I enjoy it and it's kind of how I got in my undergrad I didn't know where I was going but I enjoyed math so that's why I got in um, so yeah I think for me the legacy of of Mira Mirzakhani is, is is in her work but more importantly in the way she was uh, approaching problems and approaching uh, the mathematical field but also life in general um, for various sources, from C from CBC to AMS to Math History, um, I think the words that resonated with me, with me most were uh, that she stayed herself, no matter the path and challenges that she faced. Uh, trans she was transcending boundaries. There was a lot of creativity, of simplicity. She was original. She was tenacious. She was imaginative, brilliant, and fearless. Uh, adaptable. She showed a lot of adaptability and add a taste for difficult problems. And that's really something I, I see. Um, I'm not sure where my path will lead, but I think learning about uh, Miriam Mirzakhani kind of convinced me that uh, this kind of fearless and, and, and fearless approach and original approach to mathematics and just that interest uh, is sure to, to get me somewhere that I love being. Um, so for me, for me, it really reinforced that passion and throughout learning for pro about problem solving as well um kind of yeah pushed for me to follow that passion and follow uh just that that taste for the challenge and that taste from for for striving and for uh, attempting problems that you know others wouldn't think possible or or challenges that others wouldn't think possible um but that you know i might have a shot at so that's uh that's about it for me. I think uh, it's really in the legacy of her character, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed learning about all the impacts she had in, in all these different fields, but also in the advancement of, of women in mathematics uh, and in science in general. Many thanks also to, to you, Jean-Philippe. And uh, I would really like to, to thank all the panelists because they've been uh, very uh, um, interesting and uh, really uh, illustrating various uh, aspects of, uh, of uh, Maria Mirzakhani's uh, of um, theorems and initiatives that are inspired by, by Maria Mirzakhani. And of course, I hope it also gives you the wish to see the film that was mentioned several times, the film uh, Secrets of the Surface, if you have not seen yet, and also uh, to watch this uh, beautiful uh, exhibition uh, Remember Maria Mirzakhani, which is also part of, a, um, of this uh, 
uh, virtual uh, HLF uh, program. So, many thanks for attending the, the panel and bye-bye. Uh, I think this uh, gave us a fantastic uh, view and, and also uh, so many aspects of Mariam's life and her contributions. So this was really inspiring. Uh, we now have the chance to uh, get to some discussion. We have uh, here live and online uh, Marie-Francoise Roy from France, uh, Georges-Philippe uh, Gadouri Saint-Façon. Uh, he's here from Canada. And Vincent Delacroix is here from France. They were all also in the panel. Thank you for, for joining us here live. And uh, we got already a few questions from the audience who watched us. And uh, I would like to start with the first question, which might go to um, Vincent. The question from Grant Barclay. Uh, can you elaborate more on how the meanders are realized in hyperbolic ge geometry? Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, yeah, thank you for, for the question. Uh, I see that there is another question, which is about hyperbolic geometry. So let me answer the two of them at the same time. So there is another question which asks, what is the hyperbolic sphere? And... Yeah, what in general is uh, hyperbolic geometry? So uh, hyperbolic geometry is just one kind of geometry as Euclidean geometry is. And it's a geometry where one of the famous axioms about the lines is not satisfied, namely that uh, in Euclidean geometry in the plane, it's known that two lines are either parallel or intersect. And in hyperbolic geometry, you have many, many lines that just uh, do not intersect and pass through two different points. Um, and the, yeah, the main feature of hyperbolic geometry is that you have some sort of uh, exponential growing of, of the ball. So if you are trying to find your way in a hyperbolic geometry, you will basically never find out again where, where you started from. Uh, so it's a very rough introduction, but it's a very well studied uh, geometry that were that was introduced mainly by Klein and uh, Lobachevsky and studied a lot by Poincaré. And it has a lot of, of application even outside of geometry, in number theory, for example. So let me not talk more about like rough terms about hyperbolic geometry, but focus a bit on hyperbolic spheres. So what I mean about hyperbolic sphere is that you have a sphere, which is a surface, that I mean a two-dimensional manifold. And on it, you have a metric, which is such that locally it looks like the hyperbolic model. Uh, the, so about the realization of meanders, uh, it's uh, just the fact that a simple closed curve uh, has unique realization on a hyperbolic surface as a geodesic. So more generally, for any homotopy class of curve on a hyperbolic surface, there is a unique way to realize it as a geodesic up to homotopy. And this is how you would make this realization happen. If you have uh, a meander, a meander I recall is two simple closed curve and you look at the pattern of intersection of them. So these, uh, two simple closed curves, you simply realize them as geodesics, and this would be the, ge the realization of the, of the meander. So that was 
Okay, there was there was a, uh, another question by Ben uh, Town, and he asked uh, how this can help uh, to address open crossing problems in knots. Uh, yeah, that's a vague question, I should say. Uh, I do not know much about uh, three-dimensional geometry. So knots are things in three-dimensional sphere, but you can, one way of draw, constructing them is by drawing these planar diagrams, but uh, it's not exactly clear what is the question. So how, as far as I know, uh, there is not much we can say uh, from meanders to the study of, of knots. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marie-Francoise, I, I think you had also a question to, uh, to Vincent. Yes, exactly, yes, I have a question for Vincent. Uh, so it's uh, at the end, it's about the proof at the, at the end of your presentation. You mentioned that there is a connection between this uh, result of Maria Mirzakani in her PhD and you, the, the result you've been proving with uh, your uh, co-authors. But you say also that now you have a new proof uh, which is not using their former theorem. And I wanted to know if this new proof is still using some hyperbolic geometry or is it purely combinatorics now? Thank you for the question. It's a, it's a very, very good question. So uh, the new proof that I mentioned is actually the proof which is in our article with the co-authors. And this proof does not have any hyperbolic geometry in there. Uh, there is a lot of combinatorics, but uh, there is a, to get actual explicit numbers uh, for the constant that appear in front of the asymptotics, to get the to prove that these uh, they are numbers, there is combinatorics and also um, dynamical systems which is used. So there is a kind of parallel with um, what Maya Mirzakani did because she used an action of a group on certain space, and we also used the same kind of argument but with a different group and a different space. So you can see that there are parallel between the proof, but they are. No going through different kind of objects. And in the end, to get the explicit constants, there is a bit of high, um, algebraic geometry involved because uh, these are these famous volumes of moduli spaces that are involved. And these were computed by uh, JLF Atreya, uh, Alex Eskin and Anton Zorich. And to find these values, the only approaches we have right now, they do not go through combinatorics. So there is no combinatorial proof for for this, getting the specific numbers. Yeah. Okay, so just to one, one little more question. Um, so uh, you say the two results are equivalent. So does it mean that from this new proof, which you describe now, which is with a lot of combinatorics, but some dynamical system and some algebraic geometry, you would uh, be able to, to recover the initial result of, uh, of Mariam Mirzakani? Uh, yes and no. Uh, if you do it directly, you do not recover the result in full. So to recover the precise result of Mirzakani, you have to use some uh, further results of uh, Hugo Parlier, Juan Souto, and uh, Vivek Erlansen. But using alternative, uh, like alternative results that make links between all possible metrics on a given surface, then you can prove back the, the theorem. So, so yes, you can either use Mirzakani to prove our theorem, that is the work of Francisco Arana that I, I mentioned, and you can also go the other way around using some other machinery. But yeah, uh, up to the fact that you need to use other results, these are equivalent. There is a great other question from the audience, uh, if I may. Um, Grant Berkeley, Bartley again, sorry, Bartley, uh, asked, what is your favorite uh, Mirzalkani theorem or memory? And I would like to, to ask all of the participants who are here now, and maybe start with uh, George Philip. What is your favorite theorem or memory, or maybe both? 
I think, I think for me, um, having learned obviously through research, uh, for about most of, of Mara Mirzakani's work, uh, for me, it, it's really what the Toronto win, the first perfect score, um, at the Olympiads in Toronto, uh, that she got, uh, when she was, which, which was fairly young, when she was still studying, um, for me, I think. I don't know, you know, I wouldn't want to assume, but for me, uh, the mathematics Olympiads and everything are always something that, that I've loved and that are, you know, there's the experience of doing it, but also that's everything that's around it, the experience of going there. Um, so for me, I, that really, that's really close to, uh, to my experience and the fun I have in mathematics and in problem solving and competitions where, where you get with all of these wonderful minds and you, uh, you explore. So, so her, her Toronto, uh, Olympiad win at the mathematics olympiad i think that that's my favorite uh favorite aspect favorite memory uh, marie francoise what is your yes this uh, arcani theory mm -hmm. so in fact i'm not sure i'm going to, to answer exactly the question but i think one aspect which i think is is very very important so uh, in Ayam Zakani is not only that, of course, she was the first woman to to have a, a field medal, but I think it's also that she was the first person from her country, also from Iran. And I think this this part is uh, is really also extremely uh, interesting, and I think you'll see it also if you look the if you watch the movie, which I think is, is scheduled also later tonight after after this uh, question and answers that you, you see how um, the fact that she um, was so important from her, for her country. I think she is really a very important person, not only for women in mathematics, but I think she's also a very important uh, person for, for everybody in, uh, in her country. So I think this aspect, normally the mathematicians don't mention much, but for me, it is, uh, it's also really extremely important. Vincent, your favorite um, Nizakami theorem or memory? Uh, so it's a bit strange position because I never had the chance to actually meet Nizakami in person. So I only know about her uh, through uh, the articles or through other patterns that talk uh, about her with me. And uh, what is the best I, I think from her is in the proofs uh, that, that she writes, uh, the, um, the arguments that she, she uses to prove the, the first, the statement themselves, they are very often very strong and very simple to state and answer a very general question that was open for a long time. And also the proofs that she developed uh they are um, very new like she brings uh, an idea that was just fits perfectly to to go through the proof and and make it go on so it's not necessarily technical but it's just a good idea that makes the proof um, understandable uh, as a math mathematical concept and uh, understand it so uh, i have a great admiration for the way uh, she just shape the the proofs of her of her results and if i had one theorem uh, to mention beyond the the one i i mentioned uh, in, in my talk about this curves counting uh, she wrote uh, not long before uh, her death that a very important theorem about uh, mathematical billiards so uh, this is about billiards in polygons. So you consider a polygon in the plane and you play billiards, meaning that there is a ball and that reflects, so that goes in straight line and reflects on the boundary with respect to the law of, uh, of the light with reflection on the sides. And she made in collaboration with Alec Eskin, a very important theorem about the dynamical behavior of these balls, which, make the link with the geometry of moduli spaces. So I will not say more about that, but it's for me, it's like one of the great and important theorem that she did. Well, 
the, the video uh, uh, says, uh, at least the text about the video says that she was a superstar or uh, maybe still is a superstar. And uh, to what extent can mathematicians be superstars? And maybe an additional question to, to all of you. Uh, we, we talked a, a lot about this uh, transgressing separation aspect and also being her an Iranian woman in the US and uh, famous in both countries, so in the US and Iran. And so I think she, as a scientist and as a person, as a woman, she did quite a contribution uh, towards uh, like opening minds, opening boundaries. Uh, to what extent do you think uh, should or do scientists or should mathematicians uh, also like shape society more or is that a role that scientists have to play? Like, should you be superstars at sci as, as mathematicians <laughs> or strive for that? Hey, can you repeat the question? Because I, I didn't get it. So, what was your question again? Well, the, uh, the impact of, of Mariam to uh, also science and uh, society. Yeah? So, so between the US and Iran, she had quite an impact on people and how to think about each other. And my question is a bit like, to what extent uh, should or do play scientists and in particular mathematicians play a role to cross boundaries, to be uh, like to do this transgression between cultures, science uh, and gender maybe? If I can jump in, um, I, I do think uh, mathematicians, as much as other scientists, you know, we, we hold a great power, mathematicians and computer scientists and scientists in, in general, um, but especially with the, uh, the, all the revolutions happening right now and uh, how fast technology is moving, whatever we do as fundamental or as, as pure um, as we think it is, um, it's probably going to have an, an effect on society on, on, or on what we develop tomorrow um, or in the next week, even if we don't know, even if we think there's, you know, it's just pure or fundamental for now. Um, so I think we, we, we definitely have to be mindful and we, we should strive to um, obviously be comfortable as well and obviously align with, with our values, but um, we have to be mindful that we, we're going to have effects on society, whether we like it or not. Um, so that we kind of be mindful and we use whatever power we hold. Um, we reflect on that power and make sure we're, um, we're or orienting it towards, uh, toward, towards helping society and towards what we, we consider is a value-based approach to, to change. Any further opinion, Vincent? Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I agree with, uh, George Philip, that uh, you cannot avoid the fact that society will make uh, interpretation or will uh, consider mathematicians as, as persons. So there need to be to, yeah, there might not be superstar, but at least you need to identify yourself with the, with the people. It's hard to just learn science without having interaction with person and like identifying yourself with other persons or having admiration to other persons is one way to to have human interactions. So I think that that's sort of unavoidable. Uh, and yeah, so they are big figures in mathematics and they influence uh, in bad or good the, the rest of the world. And yeah, it's perhaps not ideal since science uh, hope is to make everything objective and with that, like out of this uh, personal content, but that's also unavoidable, I think. Yeah. Yes. yes, I would like to say something because also that there is something very special. I mean, and it makes her a little bit similar to the great figure of Evaris de Galois also. Well, of course, he died even younger, but she died very young also. And I think it's something that, of course, we don't insist about that in the panel. We don't insist about that also in the film we are going to see. But I believe it is also something which, which uh, 
is uh, creating a lot of emotion because you know she was the, the first woman ever to to have this award and then she for example she was ever able to present a talk at this uh, Heidelberg laureate forum because she died uh, she was she went very sick and then she died very early uh, leaving uh, her family I mean a little girl and husband so I I think this tragic uh, side is also something that is touching people very much and the, the reason also why we wanted to add this May 12 that was mentioned so I think it's really part also of uh, you now of this icon I mean that she died early Here is a last question from the audience, and um, maybe given the time, this might be our last round now, uh, and, and I'm looking forward to see your comments on that. Uh, here is uh, again uh, Grant Barkley asking, uh, do you have recommendations for how young researchers can get involved with organizations or initiatives that help reduce barriers to women and underrepresented groups in the math community? I, I think there are really some problems with my connection because I didn't hear the question again. <laughs> what was the question? Uh, I don't know, maybe the others can start commenting on that. So what is what, what are your recommendations for young researchers to get involved with organization initiatives to reduce barriers for underrepresented groups in mathematics? So uh, the first thing is that the barrier exists because mainly on of our behavior that so the barriers exist in society. So the first thing is to be aware that these barriers exist and that any of us are actually uh, making this barrier. So even if you do not agree with them, they are here and you just reproduce them. So the first thing is to be aware and try to change yourself, not trying to change the world because the world will change with you. So is just, uh, yeah, try to learn about your own behavior with this, the person you consider should be not uh, left on the side. And beyond that, uh, there are organizations and initiatives, and I don't think they are very hard to find. So even going on Google, looking for uh, different organizations, they are gathering of women in mathematics that uh, happen all, the, uh, all over the world in different mathematical communities. So which is one example. Uh, and yeah, from my point of view, this is what I had to say. Further comments by the other two? George Philippe, any recommendation for young researchers? You are one yourself. Um, I'd say, I think, I know at my university, it's just taking opportunities um, and looking for advocacy. Sometimes we wouldn't necessarily think, hey, here's an opportunity to uh, help reduce barriers to women and underrepresented groups in the Mac community, or it's just an opportunity for advocacy, or it's an opportunity for projects but in everything you do as as Vincent said and I think that's the best way to start you question your own biases and you're also you're already involved in research and you you might be involved in clubs at your university you might be involved in boards of governors at, uh, at different places different organizations so it's questioning every decision you make and the way you approach uh, the way you approach these, these decisions these projects make sure they're equity driven um, and make sure you're always considering these barriers every time, like Vincent said, every time you're making a decision, what barriers are you, are, are you imposing? And I think Marie-Francoise also might, might have something about that because she's really involved uh, as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, we saw that there are many things uh, going on, I mean, as uh, Vincent mentioned. And uh, we have, uh, in particular, we have this May 12, that uh, day we started two years ago, as explained in the video. And this is really a moment where you can join people and, uh, and uh, join initiatives in order to, to feel uh, maybe less alone if you are 
to women in mathematics, for example. And there are also other kind of uh, initiatives of, uh, for other underrepresented groups. And I think the main thing is is to uh, to meet people like you, so that you you understand that you are not the only person having uh, maybe a, a given problem. The problem is in fact coming from society. It's not your fault. It's not something you are doing wrong. It's just a real problem uh, in society. And then. Uh, just meet other people and uh, try to see what you can do with them. I mean, that's how the uh, feminist movement started, and uh, we're still uh, we're still there. Thank you very much. So then, it only remains for me to to thank all of you. Thanks again, uh, Marie Francoise, for organizing the panel. It was really great. Uh, perspective that you gave us with these uh, five panelists. Thanks uh, to the three of you for uh, joining the live discussion. And thanks to everybody out there who watched us and uh, gave us questions via the chat. I hope you continue discussing it. And I think the legacy of Marian uh, is still there and keep it alive. And now for the next steps, I just want to give you two announcements. First of all, there are still these four slots where you can watch the video, check in the satellite program. One of the slots is actually right now. Uh, but this is also in parallel to the other uh, event that's taking place now in roughly five minutes. A discussion, a uh, talk with uh, Robert Talian and uh, Donald Knuth. So this is certainly something you also don't want to miss. Uh, hard decisions for you on how to arrange your schedule. Nevertheless, I wish you a great evening. Thanks again for everybody for participating and enjoy the forthcoming events of this virtual HLF. See you then.